Hello there. I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor, and today, as we discuss God in movies, I want us to talk about a surprisingly theological old murder mystery film starring Jimmy Stewart. And it's a movie titled Rope. Now this movie, it asks a very important and very deep theological question, what right do we have to play God? And it doesn't just ask it either, it shows you this question. It shows you a murder that happens in the opening seconds of the movie, and the whole movie, it locks you in this room where you have to watch these guys and wonder what happens next. You know, we've seen things like serial killers, and we wonder if people could get away with it. And that really is what this movie does. But it's one that doesn't glorify evil. It's made by Alfred Hitchcock, and it definitely has the quirks and unique style of Alfred Hitchcock. But it is very compelling. It is one that is fascinating to watch, and it leaves you at a very interesting place at the end. It shows you a repentance, which is something you don't see very often in movies, especially one that is built so well. Now this movie, it is shot continuously, and it is done in a single take, so everything had to be planned out and executed with perfection. Today, I'm out here doing this all continuously in a single take too, and in fact, I'm not even dubbing any music or anything over in the end, and there's no one else with me here in the studio, so I've got the synthesizer out here. But I am, I've got it sequenced in there so it can help play with me. But this is a really fascinating film and it takes us to a place where we ask, what right do we have to play God? Now while I've got you here with me, I wanted to share that I've got some interesting things going on in life. You see so many Christians of old who changed their identity and their names and things like that when they became followers of Christ, and I thought I might try that out too. So I've got my wallet with my ID, driver's license and things like that. and. You know, why not just get rid of that and start off with a, a new name? So we're going to make a little Diet Coke bomb here to get rid of it. And, you know, I don't want it to be covering me in Diet Coke either because it really doesn't explode so much as just fizzle. So I'm going to take and, and put my Mentos Diet Coke bomb over there in the, the treasure chest I've got in here. And I'm also going to take my Mento and, and glue it to the top of my cap. Not so much because I want it to stay up there, but because it'll give it a delay before it goes into the Diet Coke, because I don't want to be covered in it myself. If you ever made these, they make a big mess all over you, and that's not very fun. All right, well, it's in there. Well, it got a little too glued. Oh, oh, there we've got a reaction going. Let's seal it up, because we don't want to be covered in it. Well, let's talk about rope. Rope is a wonderful film which takes you to the edge of your chair. you constantly waiting for this resolution. You're on the cusp of curiosity wondering what's going to happen to this. Now, it's not an extravagant plot where the universe is about to collapse, but instead it's a very small local place where you see sin happening and weaving its web. And the movie, it builds on this plot. It shows you the question, what right do we have to play God? Now, again, you think of Jimmy Stewart. And you think of things like It's a Wonderful Life, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. It shows us something God's been telling us all along, that the greatest adventure we can go on in life is just the adventure of family. You think you want to go all these places, but the wonderful life that you will truly find is found there within the family. This is what God's been telling men and women all along. And then another film with Jimmy Stewart, we think of something like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, a really good movie. Many of us, we were watching this in school about a guy going to fight the monster that is Washington, D.C. These are fascinating films. You see a lot of similar elements in other movies, but Rope is different. It's different than any other movie I've seen, not just because it's shot continuously, but it's such a twist on the locked room murder mystery formula. And to give you a quick spoiler-free review, um, it is a thrilling movie. It doesn't glorify evil, but it locks you in the room with the, the murderers. It's a huge twist on the locked room mystery formula. In fact, you may not even be able to call it that because the formula of this movie is so different. It can't be compared to anything else I've seen. The movie spends its first few seconds showing you a murder without concealing the guilty parter. And again, I'm not giving you any spoilers and saying that. It shows you the guilty party. It shows you their faces. It shows you who they killed. It shows you how they did it right in front of you. And then the movie locks you in there with them. And if you're to be captivated, if it's going to have your attention at all, it has to work really hard to do this. It has to build suspense. It has to build that stirring of the nerves in some way that's quite compelling. So when I say this is a locked room mystery, I mean you, the audience, the viewer, you're the one who's locked in. And Alfred Hitchcock, he goes above and beyond in keeping you entertained for a full feature film using nothing but a thrilling plot. 
Nothing outside the room, no CGI, nothing like that, just a thrilling pot and that question of what right do we have to play God? So again, we come here and we find this, this fascinating plot. It is one that's about a murder. And I'm not giving you any spoilers when I say there's two guys that, that kill somebody just for the artistic purpose of it because that's what the first few seconds of the movie are. If you've watched enough of this movie to see some characters on screen, you'll know that's what's going on. But the question of what right do we have to play God, it's one that when we think about it, we realize, you know, as even though we think we have good intentions, even though we think we're intelligent, we might be blind to our own wickedness. This movie, it doesn't have the traditional archetypes you might expect, but instead it has some really specific and also a little bit nuanced archetypes. It shows you a sociopath and a psychopath, which are not the same thing. They might function fairly similar, but sociopaths, they are people who are willing to be reformed, or at least they're, they have something about them that is more receptive to reform, being reformed than, say, the psychopaths who have a genetic reason why they're often violent and carrying out these wicked sins. God himself can change their hearts, but when it comes to therapy and things like that, sociopaths are much more receptive to that sort of treatment. In this movie, it shows you the difference. It shows you the people who are philosophers who say, oh, well, what if the intelligent knew more about life than, say, the, the dumb? This movie shows you that intelligence and wisdom are not the same thing. And oftentimes people think that intelligence will reign the day, but intelligence can actually be quite wicked, regardless of its intention. So this is a fascinating movie. I highly recommend you check it out. I realize being a 1948 film, it's not for everyone, but it is something that I think you would enjoy if you can get your hands on it. So let's get to a few spoilers on this. And if you want to see what happens here in the chest, which again, the Diet Coke should destroy everything that I've got in there. And we're doing this continuously, so there's going to be some issues like that. So when you check that out later, we'll, we'll see what happens, but you got to stick around to the end. But for some spoilers now, when I say this is a locked room mystery, I mean that only to as much of an extent as you can use that title because it doesn't follow the traditional formula. But it does leave you in a place where you're figuring out what happens next. And again, we've seen moments like this. We wonder, what if you wanted to be a serial killer and you were just really clever about it? You cleaned up your tracks. Could you get away with it? What if you were just someone who was really ambitious and wanted to commit murders and didn't care what happens? Well, all those questions are kind of addressed in this movie. And it leaves you wondering what will happen. These two guys, they come in, they murder their friend in the first few seconds, and they stuff him in a box, and then they serve dinner and invite his parents over in to eat on top of where their son's body is. You, as a viewer, you're locked into this scene. You're locked in there just as the body is sitting in that chest. And the question is, what happens next? When it comes to movies and even television as a whole, I've come to notice that the higher the stakes are in the movie, the worse the writing tends to be. If the writers are skilled at keeping your attention with the plot, then they don't need a lot of explosions or things like that. But if they're not skilled at keeping your attention with the plot, they're going to add explosions and they're going to escalate the threat. Maybe it's not just a few people die, but maybe it's a whole nation or a whole planet or the whole universe. There seems to be this relationship with plot and really the stakes. And the higher the, the stakes are, the worse the writing is. I, I kind of feel like people who are writers, they kind of use these. Um, this movie, it's in the realm where the threat is really kind of low, especially since the murder happens in the first few seconds, but the plot is extremely high. Um, it is made in 1948, so it doesn't move in the way that a, a modern movie would move as far as the plot goes, but it has to develop the characters. It has to develop the story. It has to make you think about the question even before it is said out loud. So this movie is really fascinating. And from the Christian perspective, it's a movie that I highly recommend. It gives you insight into sociopathy and psychopathy. It gives you insight into wickedness of sin and people who think that they're skilled enough to live out their pet sins on the side. And it also shows us a great moment of repentance. This isn't a movie that glorifies evil. And I know I said that earlier, but I really want to hash that point. This is a movie that shows a true repentance. And it's not one that's thrown in there as a one-liner either. You see it happen. You see somebody who has a complete different mentality at the beginning of the movie than at the end. And you see as it goes through, you see their heart turn. You see the gears working in their head. The acting in this movie is absolutely phenomenal and I highly recommend it. So that's really what Rope is. It's a great thriller. It asks the question, what right do we have to play God? It shows you repentance and it leaves you at a moment of resolution, even though there are still some questions. So we look here 
and I went to get rid of my, my identity. So let's see what happens here. Again, it was never meant to be in a big explosion. It just kind of fizzes out all over the place, but uh, I guess the, the bottle never really went off. Um, and there's not a second bottle in here. You can see I've got the works of love hoping to ruin that. The other half of my wallet, I was hoping to get everything destroyed in the chest here. Um, we'll just, yep, yeah, it's empty. But the truth is, I guess if your bottle's hermetically sealed, it never will go off. Maybe I knew that all along. Maybe I didn't. Who knows? If you want something which will leave you at that place of mystery, but also shows you some good theology and stirs your nerves, makes you think, then check out Rope. Buy it on eBay for like $6.45 shipped to your house, or you can rent it on somewhere like Amazon. Well, maybe you know someone who can lend it to you. But check out this movie if you're looking for something which is a little different, that's done in a very strange way, but nonetheless fascinating. So thank you for joining me. Again, I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor. With that, God love you and have a blessed day.